Last year, Conference USA was won by UAB. It has been an incredible story in their history, and they join us right now, Head Coach Bill Clark. Bill, good to have you back again, my friend. Good to see you. We'll talk to you first. Congratulations on last year. Thank you. Lee Dufour, the starting uh, offensive lineman, the only starter back on the offensive line, and also joining us, uh, Fitzgerald Mofor, the linebacker, who's got an incredible story himself. Let's talk about last year. Start of the season, 9-1. and one. You end up with a school record 11 wins. You win the championship, Middle Tennessee, incredible game. The feeling afterwards, how emotional was it considering everything you've been through? I, I, you know, even when we think back, you get emotional. You know, I mean, it's uh, you kind of get tears in your eyes thinking about just all the work and, and so happy for these players and the coaches and our, and our fans and our community. Mm-hmm. It's, it's still emotional today. Well, you beat Middle Tennessee in the title game. Final was 27-25. Then you go to a bowl. You beat Northern Illinois in a bowl game. I go back to that day I was sitting in your office when you fa- basically found out that the program was going to be mm-hmm. shut down. And I think I speak for a lot of us watching all that last year. We were thrilled for you. Thank you. I mean, and, and the community itself. Do the guys understand how special that was? I think so. You know, I think we have talked about it so much. We bring guys back. Um, you know, I think they all had a taste. And you got, you know, most of that team was there when we first brought it back, right. you know, whether it was toward the end of 15 or 16. So they had a year of practice uh, before the 17 season and, you know, in the old facilities and, and, you know, we're trying to build a building and they're hearing this history over and over, but we did show them that, you know, we, you know, we wanted to remind them even in 18, some of the guys that got there, I'm going to do that again. You know, we want to remind these guys of kind of where, where this thing came, comes from. Well, that's the best season in program history, but with that comes expectations. And this year, uh, some of the prognosticators are saying eh, maybe fourth. Mm-hmm. You've defied the prognostications since you've been there, but the expectations now. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have a we have a standard we we've set. We thought that was our standard before. That's kind of the standard that I'm that I'm used to having. And you know, when you put that out there, though, it was kind of like us saying, "Hey, we believed we could win a championship last year," and people were looking at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but the year before, we were picked 130th out of 130 teams. So. Um, you know, I think it's what we believe. At the same time, we understand there's great coaches, there's great players. Uh, games are going to come down to the wire. So, you know, first we've got to live with that bullseye on our chest, which means right. we've got to work even harder um, to earn that. 35 seniors are gone from last year's team. And, and outside of the playing and, and what they provided to this team, what about the experience and leadership? Who makes up for those 35 seniors? Well, I, you know, I think that's one of the things we've been working on. I think, you know, what a program looks like, uh, you know, a real program looks like from top to bottom athletically, tr- how we train. You know, I think if you looked at our group right now, you would be surprised, you know, how they look. I think top to bottom we look better than we did last year. Um, you know, the one thing that's hard to, to replace is experience. So, you know, we've got to do a great job in how we practice guys like this that have been through the wars, you know, I think are doing a great job talking to those guys about what it looks like, um, you know, when you go line up in this conference. And, and you know, we can't have a learning curve. You know, right. we've, got to, we've got to start like that now. Well, you lose your top five wide receivers from last year, but they do have their quarterback coming back, Tyler Johnson, the third in, incredible game in the Boca Raton Bowl, threw for over 370 yards. Uh, tell us about him and how he has to elevate his game this year. Well, I think, you know, Tyler was one of those guys that, that was a winner in high school. I've known him, you know, for a long time. You know, his, him and his brother both played with my son growing up. Um, so, you know, I think knowing who this guy is and what he believes, he, he waited his turn but was working the whole time. Uh, you know, I think he did a lot of good things last year, but I think he'd be the first t- to tell you that he had a lot of things he wants to do better. And uh, from the receiving core standpoint, we have we had a bunch of guys that were kind of waiting in the wings last right. year. So I'm, I'm really excited about this receiving core and what they do with him. They've had a really good offseason of well, work. You, you talk about the receiving core that have been waiting in the wings. Two names to remember, Austin Watkins, Kendall Parham. They combined for 21 receptions last season. I have known you have known you a while. I think you're expecting them to have a breakout year. I've got high expectations for that group. I really do. I mean, I, I we got to practice against those guys. You know, I always kind of once the season starts, I matriculate over to that defensive side. And so, you know, we can name them guys, and I can name about two or three others, including a tight end that were there every day going against this defense. And one of the reasons I think we were great defensively last year, we had a really good scout offense that they went against every day. And, 
And uh, I know Fitz would echo that statement about those guys. There's some We've got some good talent coming at the receiver core. Well, I don't want to forget the offense without mentioning your MVP. In the title game, Spencer Brown had an incredible season, but now he's got a lot of new offensive linemen. And talk about the target. It's going to be on him this year. How have you talked to him about accepting those expectations and the fact he's going to be a marked man? Well, I'm going to say two things. One, I'm going to say I think the guys around Spencer, Jonathan Hayden, Lucia Stanley, Larry Wooden, that group of running backs is better than we were last year. Oh, really? Yes. They are, they are better. And then Spencer, um, you know, he's not a guy to make excuses. I don't know if anybody even knew he had a turf toe all last year. I would say he was probably at about 80%. Um, he's at about 238 pounds right now. 236, 238, he's running probably as good as I've seen him run since we've got him there. He's had a great offseason. Uh, I think you're going to see even – I think you're going to see what this guy really looks like this year. Uh, 200 and whatever pounds? Yeah, yeah, I think I got an idea what he looks yeah. like. Um, defense. Last year I thought at times your defense was the strength of the team. Five starters are back. But you and I talked a few years ago about what makes defense good. And what you told me, and I wrote it down, you said attention to detail. Yep. That has become the norm at UAB, has it not, on the defensive side? I think so, you know, and I, I think what's happened for us, and, and, you know, granted, we got some really good guys, and, you know, I think four of those guys are still on NFL rosters, so, you know, that's go, we're going to see how good, you know, we are defensively, but defense, and I think, you know, Fitz would, once again, would probably tell you this, I am a stickler for every, every minor thing, but I, and I tell guys all the time, you got 70 great plays on defense, if, it's, if there's 80 snaps and you gave up 10, that's 70 points or and just go right. through, you know, where you – so it, it, you don't know what the play is going to be in a game defensively that can be a score. So, you know, you've got to have attention to detail. Well, let's talk about two players that really had to play last season, expecting big things again this year on the defensive line. One of the great names, Fish McWilliams and Antonio Moultrie. Um, do they have bigger roles this year? Oh, no doubt. You know, we had Anthony Rush, Q Thaggart in front of them. Uh, so Fish McWilliams, you know, was a player of the year down in the Panhandle a couple years ago. Moultrie, believe it or not, when you see this guy, 6'4", 300 plus, was a free safety his ninth grade year, so he's an athlete. That group, along with obviously Garrett Marino coming back, um, who's got a chance, I think, to keep playing on Sundays. That that group may not be as – I don't know if there's a talented in a couple spots, but depth-wise, we may be better. That's interesting. Now let's talk offense. Let's go to lead to four. Only starter back, as you mentioned, from the line from last year. But last year, he started the first seven games, then broke. Not an elbow. See, I got it right. <laughs> we'll say it's a bone. A bone in his arm. How about that? There you go. But he did come back and play in the title game and the bowl game. When you knew that you might be able to play in the title and bowl game, did the little healing angel of football come down oh, and abs- heal you a little faster? Absolutely. I mean... <clears throat> You know, going that far into the season, having that injury and ex- expecting to be out for the rest of the season. I mean, I just started crying when I got to the locker room after they told me I broke my arm. I was like, well, there it goes. But thanks to the, the amazing, you know, staff we have at UAB, the surgeons, the doctors, everybody on our training staff. I mean, they, they made sure I was in uh, physical training, physical therapy, you know, two or three times a day, every single day of the week. Um, being able to come back and start for the championship game, I mean, that was just, you know, the, the perfect end to my season. Um, being able to start and win that game and then go to the, the bowl game and start that game as well with my robotic elbow brace. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun. It was really exciting. I was, I was glad I was able to be there for my teammates. Yeah, I want to take you back to freshman year and as we take a look at some of the <laughs> offensive highlights. But your freshman year, did you ever have the expectation that Coach Clark would lead you to this type of success? I, I could have never saw that coming, honestly. Um, I knew... There was something special about UAB when I came here my freshman year. You know, Coach Clark and his staff had just got here, and I knew the capabilities that that was there. I mean, I knew what Birmingham was capable of. I knew what UAB was capable of. Um, And, I mean, it's just been exciting, this journey that I've been on since 2014. You know, the program shutting down, leaving, going to South Alabama for two semesters and coming back. I mean, you couldn't – I don't know if anybody could have, you know, in 2014 told me, hey, you're going to do all these things, and this is where you're going to be at in four or five years. Why would you come back? This guy right here, Coach Clark, sitting right next to me. I mean, you can't say enough enough good things about this guy. Um, Coach Clark, you know, I you can't put it into words. The respect that you have for him, you know, he's he's always going to be there for you. You know he cares about you. You know he loves you. Even when you're done with football, he's going to be there for you. And it's hard to find that in college coaches nowadays, I think. You know, there's a lot of uh, – relationships that you build when you're in college football and the one I have with Coach Clark, you know, I wouldn't trade for anybody else. 
Yeah, I would have ditto all of that. Now, I tried to stump him earlier today. <laughs> Satsuma, Alabama. I found it interesting, so I did a little homework. Lee knew it all. What's it named after? It's named after the, the orange, the Satsuma citrus fruit. It's a little bit sweeter than a typical orange, but I, I pretty much knew that. My grandpa had a, a Satsuma tree in his backyard, so when people ask me that, I'm like, I used to pick those off the tree all the time, you know? <laughs> and it was from a Japanese emperor or something yeah. that started. They brought it, it over, and there the rest go. is history. There you go. I really thought I had you on that, too. You nailed me, dude. Okay? Uh, Fitz, I want to talk to you. You were a walk-on. Why did you walk on at UAB? Um, just knowing that uh, I would have the 2016 season uh, be able to prove myself and compete every day and step up in a level of competition, you know. I just knew that was an opportunity I couldn't let go. Well, you finished second on the team in tackles last year with 75. You had 10 total tackles in the title game. The pride that you have in this defense, even though you've lost some key guys, talk about that pride coming into this season. Um, to me, I feel like the young guys aren't going to miss a beat. You know, going through spring ball and watching those guys grow and get better every day was just a special experience because, honestly, in the beginning, I thought it would be a stretch, you know, try to get them to catch up to the speed of the guys before. But just going going through practice every day and see how hard they work and see how relentless they are, you know, I was really impressed, honestly, by how fast they were catching up. You know, I, I, I hate to do this, but I'm, I'm going to bring this up anyway. I want all of you to comment. I was on a radio show recently at uh, somebody who's playing a Conference USA team. And they said the reason UAB came back like that because Conference USA is weak. Oh. Um, I almost lost my faith, Bill, on that one, to be honest with you. When you hear that, and I'm not making the story up, and I was very offended by that. When you hear somebody say that, well, the reason that Bill Clark, it's, it's because the conference is weak. What, what's your reaction to that? Well, I think any competitor would probably get a little agitated about that. You know, you're talking about our conference, but the the bowl head-to-head -head competition, I think we've got we've won that again where we were 4-2 and two this year. Exactly. So, you know, if you just talk about look at us, what we do in the bowl game. So we've won that three out of the last, what, five or six, five, years? six years? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I don't know what else to say other than that. Um, I do think there's a lot of similarities in our teams. You know, we're all, you know, pretty close and right. I think that you know we probably beat up on each other pretty good um you know but I you know but I'm just I, this is a good league there's really good coaches they care we've got great athletes and you see them playing on Sundays all the time so uh, I feel pretty good about our league and I think it speaks for itself when you see us you know that bowl match up well I'd like to have the players respond but unfortunately they're telling me we're out of time but I'll just let you know this Lee the whole time was going <laughs> it's like the Incredible Hulk thing going on over here next to me. Coach, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Same here, my friend. Best of luck, guys, Same. all right? Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll talk about the UTEP Miners when we return to Frisco, Texas. <laughs>